So we did a lot of stuff on fault resolution. And at that time, we were really just doing geometry to resolve the stress on a fault. But we really didn't know why or when you know, uh, the, stress, the, the fault would actually slip. Okay? And so the sort of criterion or equation that we typically use for when a fault will slip was actually part of the second question or one of the questions on your exam, right? I, I gave you the I gave the equation and, and sort of set up a, uh, a scenario, but in this case, uh, this is the equation where you have the shear stress and the normal effective stress resolved on the fault. So these are the, sh the shear and normal effective stress on the fault is equal to some friction coefficient. And so you have this Coulomb failure function, which just rearranges this equation and says that basically, as long as this, where this mu, and, and this shouldn't be confused with, you know, the one we used previously, ui, which is sort of a material property or the strength of the rock, this actually is the friction coefficient, right? So we're not talking about mu i, the, the internal friction. We're talking about the actual friction on a fault. Okay, as measured in the laboratory. So this is again a material property associated with faults or associated with friction. So it has to do with the basically the surface roughness and other things, uh, the types of material, the surface roughness, and other things. And so uh, basically, if this function is less than zero the fault will not slip. If it's e it comes equal to zero, then you, you're going to have slip. So here's a range of data. This is uh, a little hard to see, but I mean all of those dots represent tests done for on friction tests done on different types of rocks. And what we can see is that in virtually no scenario, oh, I guess uh, you know th these is if if it, if you can't read this, this is the normal stress uh, versus shear stress. And so in almost no case, virtually no case is this friction coefficient that would be the slope here, this friction coefficient less than 0.6. So it, what, what, that really, what I'm really saying is, in no case less than 0.6 did this ratio of normal to shear stress on the fault cause it to slip. Right. And so, and again, these are a bunch of different types of rocks. So basically, we can come up with a, some bounds that say that that coefficient of friction is always less than or equal. Uh, always between, rather, somewhere between 0.6 and 0.1. And so this is the 0.6 line. This is the one. One, okay. So coefficient of friction for rocks is always in this range. And a lot of times we just say it's 0.6. I think um, I think in the Zoback book he makes a colloquial remark about the this guy Jaeger, who was one of the most famous guys in rock mechanics for all of the last century, and he had a saying of something about there's two things you need to know about friction: it's always 0.6, and it'll make a monkey out of you. <laughs> so. Anyway, basically saying it's always 0.6 until you need it to be, and then, it won't, and then it'll make you look like a fool. You know? uh, so, but virtually, we, you know, if you don't know any different, we always use 0.6 uh, for friction. And, and you know, the, it's not that bad. The data doesn't certainly, uh, certainly that's a, a bounding limit. 